This video is sponsored by Apogee Instruments. Apogee is one of the leading manufacturers of horticultural lab-grade light sensors and is well known to be accurate and reliable for all your growing needs. All right, everyone. Today in this video, we're doing a review for the Apogee MQ500 Quantum PAR meter, and we are comparing that to the Hydrofarm PAR meter. Now, this isn't going to be a very in-depth review. We're just going to be taking a look at a few things and uh, comparing it under a few different light sources from HID to LED. So first, we'll take a look at the case here. This is a pretty nice little case that the meter comes in. It's foam-filled, high quality. comes with the plate for mounting your sensor to. Uh, and mostly what this plate would be used for is if you were doing... Um, par footprints for certain lights you can mount it to this and it's easier to move around because it's more stable um, there's also this wand here this is a telescoping wand and this is for mounting your par sensor to this as well and you can use this for your aquarium not salt water uh, so this isn't made for salt water it'll, it'll uh, corrode it uh, but for freshwater aquariums you can put this underwater because this sensor is waterproof uh, or you can just attach it to this and just use it to uh, look at your different uh, par levels in your plant canopy. And then you have here the sensor itself as well as the meter. Uh, they are all attached. There's no, there's no way to detach them. They're all uh, one piece pretty much. And I want to talk about a couple of the specifics here. Uh, not too much. There are a couple differences between the Hydrofarm and the MQ500 from Apogee. Uh, this actually uses a coin lithium cell battery, and it's not rechargeable. You just replace it. You just unscrew the back part here, and you'll find the battery about right here. Uh, offhand, I don't know what kind of battery it is. Uh, you can go on their website and take a look at the specifics for that. The Hydrofarm power meter, this has a built-in lith uh, rechargeable lithium battery, and it's right back here. Here's what I like and I don't like. There's a pro and a con to this. What's great about this is you don't have to worry about replacing your battery in it, <laughs> obviously. You can recharge it. However, the con is, is that you can't just go to the store if something should happen to this battery in here. You can't just go to the store and pick one of these up. This has a coin cell battery in here, and you can go to the store and pick one of those up if it uh, ever depletes. However, it doesn't really use that much power. It'll last for quite a long time on that single battery. Um, the, the Hydrofarm power meter, from what I've noticed uh, over times I've been using it, is that it seems to hold a charge for a good amount of time. If I don't use it for a long time, the battery will tend to deplete on its own. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it doesn't take all that long to charge, but as far as how long it lasts on a charge, uh, if I was to use this for a long period of time, it doesn't really last all that long. Um, I don't have any specific time frames for you to list. But just keep that in mind, that that is the difference between the Hydrofarm and the uh, Apogee MQ500 meter, is that they use two different batteries, one being not rechargeable and replaceable. So, uh, take what you want from that. Uh, it doesn't really bother me either way. Uh, there's a pro and a con to both. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into testing um, different light sources from HID to LED, and uh, we'll see what kind of results we get. All right, what I've done here is I've actually taped the Hydrofarm sensor uh, to the platform that the Apogee sensor is attached to. So both of the tops of the sensors are the exact same height. So we'll just take a look at the room light here. This is actually just, um, this is under uh, T8 tubes, two T8 tubes that are on my ceiling. I think it's warm white. We we'll turn both of these on and just kind of take a look at what we're looking at here. So you can see here that we're ranging from three to four on the Apogee micromoles and same about the same thing on the hydro farm so between three and four this is the next light we're using this is a sansi 15 watt grow light uh full spectrum white light and here's what the meters are reading under the sansi light you can see we're holding pretty steady at about 170 on the mq500 from apogee and we are ranging between about 140 and 150 on the hydro farm par meter now, this is one thing I really dislike about the Hydra Farm is that oftentimes it, it is very unstable under uh, a lot of different light sources. It will fluctuate like this all the time and I often have to take the average between the high and the low that I see on the screen. So if you see here, it's holding very stable on the Apogee meter. 
All right, this is the exact same light from Sansi, except it is the red-blue veg light, as they call it. And you can see on the Hydrofarm par meter, we're reading about the exact same uh, par level. And the par level on the uh, Apogee meter has went down a little bit, so about 15 micromole less. Even if I move it around a little bit, it's going to change ever so slightly, but for the most part, the number is staying the same. And next up is this light. It's an EcoSmart that I've pretty much modified to be used as a grow light. Um, I'm not really going to talk about why I did this in this video, but um, this is what we're testing. It's 15 watt. Uh, I believe it's 4,000 K or so it says so on the package. All right, so here's what the meters look like under this light. The MQ500 is showing pretty stable at 73, and then the Hydrofarm is ranging between 55 and 56. Now I do notice on the Hydrofarm meter under certain white light sources, um, the number will be a little more stable. Uh, it doesn't really matter if it's LED or another type of light source, um, it, it varies. But it seems like every time you run a test with the MQ500 from Apogee, it's, the number is always very stable on the screen. Um, also if you notice, the Hydrofarm turned off. This will automatically turn off uh, on its own after a certain period of time. I'm not sure the amount of seconds it is, but pretty short. And then see the, the uh, Apogee one follows after that. Um, I, I do like that it has that feature that it turns it off after a certain time so you're not draining the battery by mistake. However, uh, I don't like how quickly the Hydrofarm turns off because I'll be in the middle of testing something, getting a, far put, a par footprint and this meter will turn off and I'm constantly having to turn it back on. This lasts uh, quite a bit longer. So there's one thing I do like about the MQ500 as far as the amount of time it stays on. Okay, so next up is the compact fluorescent. This is a warm white 23 watt. Uh, I don't use these for much of anything anymore. just had one laying around. Let's take a look at the power meters. So we got about 27, 28 on the Apogee and 23-ish on the Hydrofarm power meter. So, if anything, it really just shows how much less light the uh, compact fluorescent puts out versus the LED, and it uses more wattage. Okay, so next up here is this 60-watt incandescent light bulb. Remember these? We're going to test this one, too. All right, here's the incandescent readout. We got 33 on the Apogee and 21-ish on the Hydrofarm. But that's pretty interesting that it actually compares to the compact fluorescent as far as output goes in the PAR range, uh, very close to those numbers, except it's using 60 watts compared to 23 watts. So just thought that was interesting. Not that anyone would ever use an incandescent bulb to grow anything, but it wouldn't be a very thorough test if we didn't test that out too. All right, next up is daylight or sunlight. Let's see what we read on the meters. So we are looking at about 952 on the MQ500 and 640 on the Hydrofarm. So here's the first test where we're showing a considerable difference. And this is not just because the meter is inaccurate. This is also because of the angle. You see the shadow here on the sensors? If we angle this towards the sun, we're going to see a different readout. About right there. So now we're showing at about 1600 on the Hydrofarm and 1826 on the MQ500. But if we get the angle just right on the Hydrofarm, we start to kind of close in on the gap as far as the readout we see on the meter. So we're at about 1700 on the Hydrofarm and 1800 on the Apogee. So as long as the angle is, is perfect to the light source or, or near perfect as far as um, the sensor goes, uh, you're going to get a more uh, closer or accurate reading on the Hydrofarm. But that's also why uh, the Apogee wins in a lot of cases, is because you can change the angle of the sensor and it'll still read out a uh, more accurate reading. So next up is this high bay LED. This is running at about 108 watts right now. Let's take a look at what the meters say. So about 300 or so on the Apogee and about 240 on the Hydrofarm. And we're going to move it over to the Max Bloom light that I'm using for this grow test. And we'll see what kind of difference we have here. 
this is obviously not the same proximity to the light, I'm just kind of holding it. But just kind of showing the difference that the meter is showing. If I hold it a little bit closer to the light, you see the apogee is now showing uh, almost a thousand micromole to where the hydrofarm is showing only about 750. So there's a big difference there as far as the accuracy of the hydrofarm. And next up is this 400 watt HID metal halide bulb. Take a look what the sensors say. Got about 596 on the Apogee and 493, 92-ish on the Hydrofarm. So about 100 micromole off on the Hydrofarm. Okay, next up is the 400 watt high pressure sodium HID light. And you can see on the meters here, we're at 725 on the Apogee and about 667 on the Hydrofarm. Uh, so still a uh, Still a little difference in the gap, not quite as much as the metal halide though. So just like I was talking before about the sun and the angle of the sensor to the sun and how it, uh, how it affects the accuracy of the sensor, if I tilt these sensors this way just a little bit, they're both at the same angle. You can see the differences on the meter here. This is, I know this is kind of hard to see. So we're at about 617 on the Apogee and 450 on the Hydrofarm. So there's a pretty big difference between that. Now if I lay this down so that these are level again, you see in the meter that that gap uh, closes. So we're right back up at about 735 and 674 there on the Hydrofarm. So why does that actually matter? Because if you were to take a power footprint of a light and move it around like this to your different squares and you look at the meters, as you get further away from the center of the light and your sensor is flat on the hydrofarm, the accuracy of the readout is going to go way down as you get further away because that's essentially the same thing as changing the angle of the sensor. So next up is this cheap Amazon Grow Light. This is a 95 watt red, blue, white LED. You can see here that the Apogee is showing 334 and the Hydrofarm is 287. So the gap isn't too big between the two meters here. Um, now obviously this whole video isn't about accuracy because there's no way that I can possibly tell if the Apogee or the Hydrofarm is 100% accurate without comparing it to something that is known to be 100% accurate. But Apogee is well known for its accuracy and reliability so um, we're just going to have to go with the Apogee as being accurate and the Hydrofarm seem to be always trailing behind in uh, as far as what the output actually is. Okay, so these last couple lights I'm doing here is just red, green, and blue. And I have to turn the light on on the phone here to record this because you can't see these screens otherwise, but I am blocking it with my hand. But you can see the difference here. We got uh, 77 on the Hydrofarm and 110 on the Apogee. So let's try a red. All right, here's a red LED. And this is kind of interesting. So we got 74 on the Apogee and 72 on the Hydrofarm. Well, actually it's, it's kind of ranging between a couple different numbers here, but um, it's actually very surprising how close it is on the, under a red LED, even though this is kind of moving around a little bit. Um, this would be considered an error rate, but yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. It's, it's a red LED light and this is the closest I've seen these meters so far. All right, so lastly, this is the green LED. And then you can see the differences on the meter here. We got 67 on the Apogee and uh, between 50 and 55 on the Hydrofarm. So that's about it for this video. I hope that was helpful to some of you out there kind of wanting to see a test like this. Uh, I realize it wasn't too technical and there wasn't a whole lot of technical information on these meters. Um, but I'll be happy to answer your questions if you leave any questions in the comments, or you can also check out the, the video description. I'll put some more info in there if anyone desires it. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.